This is Brew City Lounge. Answers back. His first bucket of the fourth quarter. And now with 36 for the game. Yelich sends this one out to center. Bader racing back. He looks up and it is gone. Christian Yelich goes deep. This podcast is for the number one Bucks fans and Brewers fans in the world. And it's part of the Lounge Room Network. Fielder launches. Giannis got the rebound. Good and one. Wow, he's so strong. Here's your host, Brandon Snide. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another awesome show here on the Brew City Lounge. I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy days to pop in and take a listen. Super excited about today's show. Um, in about 15 minutes, I will be joined by special guest Steve Sparky Pfeiffer. You can find him over at 1250 AM The Fan. So I am super excited about that. I hope you guys are doing great out there. If you're in Milwaukee, welcome to the show. If you're in Wisconsin, Welcome to the show. Uh, anywhere that you're that you're listening or, or or watching on YouTube, thank you for for tuning in. It's it's greatly appreciated. Uh, a jam packed show, lots to break down, lots of Brewer stuff. Dive into some of Giannis' stuff. See where the Bucks are at as far as their current state injury wise. Um, so we're we're just getting rolling here and, and super excited. Bucks won um, Sunday in Orlando, one twenty four to eighty seven. Sitting at 33 and 20, uh, still breaking that or still haven't broken that three game behind uh, lead on Brooklyn and Philly. So we're excited to see maybe the last stretch of the month where the Bucks go. There was reported today that Giannis and PJ Tucker did practice. So that you know, if you're a Bucks fan, you're looking at that like, you know, wiping the sweat off your brow a little bit. Um, I know I am. I know Giannis is the type of player that doesn't necessarily miss games. So it's exciting to see him back in action. Hopefully Um, I think their next game is until Wednesday evening, if I'm not mistaken. So that will be exciting to see what they do. Um, But again, the bucks, I I think honestly where we're at with the bucks is where we're going to be at. I think where they're at in the three seed is probably where we're going to sit. I don't think that they're going to move up to the one or two seed. And, you know, quite frankly, I'm not a hundred percent sure that they really want to. Uh, the last two years, the Bucks have been the number one seed. Uh, obviously, last year was a little bit, you know, weird. They uh, had a month or what was it? Three months off in between playing a, a playoff game. So, I mean, do you count the bubble as a playoff, you know, number one seed? Sure. It kind of didn't matter. But the year before that, 2019, uh, going up against the Toronto Raptors in the Eastern Conference Finals, probably your best chance at uh, getting to the finals and, and more importantly, probably winning the finals. If you're just tuning in, thank you very much. We're already started here. We're, we're breaking down some Bucks talk, and, and we're going to get into some Brewer stuff. Steve Sparky Pfeiffer is going to join us here in about 15 or so minutes. I'm um, excited to get his thoughts, where he's going with the new radio shows that are happening over at 1250 AM, The Fan. But we're still breaking down the Bucks, and, and this is the exciting time in the NBA. Playoffs are happening. Uh, player moves are happening. Transactions are happening. Injuries are happening. Prayers out to Jamal Murray last night. Tore his ACL was reported by Shams this morning. You hate to see injuries no matter where, no matter what happens. I lived in Denver for a while. You know, you hate to see that for that fan base. They're passionate about their nuggets, really about all their sports, but you hate to see that. That was a team up and coming in the West and, and maybe a team that could have pushed LeBron uh, over the over the the edge a little bit and, and maybe taking them, you know, taking their spot in the West. So you hate to see it. Injuries suck. I mean, we're dealing with that on our own here or, you know, anxiously awaiting to see how Giannis responds with his knee injury. Um, yeah, PJ Tucker practiced today. Chris Middleton was out, uh, back soreness. Drew Holiday had a knee contusion. So it's all about getting healthy. It's all about getting ready for the playoffs. We know that. None of this matters. Regular season's fun. Yeah, sure. Tuning in on a Saturday night, TNT, listening to Shaq and and Barkley go at one another. That's great. It's it's a blast. Don't get me wrong. I love NBA basketball. But man, we we need the playoffs to be something that we love. We need the playoffs to be successful. We need to we need to be getting excited about Eastern Conference Finals every year. 
getting to the finals. You got the best player in the NBA. I mean, you could argue, sure. Yeah. You can argue that Giannis isn't the best player in the NBA. But you still got a top player in the NBA. The the ceiling is now raised. It's it's up. Screw that second round. I don't care about getting a number one seed in the regular season. I care about winning in the playoffs. And quite frankly, this could be this could be jumping ship a little bit. And I try to keep the show as positive as possible. This could we could be seeing Mike Budenholzer on the hot seat. Very much so. Could be could be his make it or break it year in the playoffs. This would be the third straight year. Obviously, you were in Eastern Conference Finals two years ago, and last year was a second-round exit. This year, there really is no excuses. This is probably the best team Giannis has around him as far as starting lineup goes and bench goes. Very athletic, very young. The Nassis, frustrating defender for uh, uh, opposing players. Bobby Portis coming off the bench, consistently giving you 15, 17 points per game, adding six or seven rebounds a game. Drew Holiday, you guys know how I feel about Drew Holiday. If you tuned you tuned in last week, or you you followed us, and, and again, get your wherever you get your podcast: Apple, Google, Spotify. Download the podcast, get the show at Bruce City Lounge. If you tuned in last week, you guys already know how I feel about Drew Holiday. In my eyes, in my opinion, he's the the best two way point guard in the NBA, and and we can sit back and go back and forth and back and forth, and, and sure, Russell Westbrook. Nothing against him. He's going to give you 30 points. He's going to give you 10 rebounds. He's going to give you nine assists. What's he doing on the other side? To win championships in the NBA, and we've seen it. LeBron with the, with the chase down block on Andre Iguodala in the 2016 finals. Iguodala the year before, shutting down LeBron. You got to play defense, especially when you're going up against a team with Massive superstars in the Brooklyn Nets, eventually. You could even put Philly in that category. So I'm excited to see where they're going. Last week, I broke into who was the Bucks number two. Um, we kind of went back and forth with some Some of the people who were dropping by and dropping comments. And some said Middleton, some said Drew. And again, I mean, either one is, <laughs> either one is fine. Uh, I don't think you're really – I don't think you really have – a problem if it's either one. I think you're fine either one. But what matters is what you do in the playoffs. I don't care who your number two is. I don't care if Giannis is dropping 48 points. What's your number two doing? Because he's not going to do it on his own. We already know he's going to run into a wall. We already know the NBA refs are going to screw him. We already know the other team is going to flop. We already know these things. These are things that we know. These are factual things. These are things that we have physically have seen and have dealt with. We have thrown our remotes on the floor. We have screamed at our phone. We have angrily texted tweets to the universe. We know what's going to happen when it comes to things out of our control. What can we control? What can the Milwaukee Bucks control to take that next step? Because I'm tired of not having a championship team in this city. This city needs it. This fan base needs it. Quite frankly, the state needs it. 2011 was a decade ago. So yeah, where's not, where's the honest with the knee injury? Who's your number two? Is Bud on the hot seat? He has been willing to make, and I, and I'll give credit where credit's due. Bud's been, frustrating at times and we've been frustrated with him in regards to not making changes or making changes that didn't make any sense or the rotations and it seems like this year he's a little bit more open to making some changes maybe some changes that he's might not even be comfortable with Switching on defense, uh, wide open guys in the corner, just frustrating stuff at times. So we're going to get into the Bucks. We think, I mean, in my opinion, I think they're they're content on the three seed. I don't know if um, that really matters. I don't. Does seeding matter? It's it's going to. I think this year, last year it did not matter. But if you're telling me in the second round, 
after you play more than likely Atlanta. Oh, hello, uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich. Mark Stein tweeting, oh, this is why the, the Bucks wanted him. We know why we wanted him. The NBA knew why we wanted him. Thanks, Mark Stein. We know why we wanted bo- Bogey. Everybody knows. The NBA knew what bringing that type of player on this team would have done. They may not have had Drew Holiday. Maybe they did. Maybe they could have got him. I mean, I think Dante was part of that package for Bogdanovich. Well, he wasn't part of the Drew Holiday package. So I think if I can't, if my memory's serving me right, and if you're tuning in and watching, let me know if I'm wrong. I think Dante was the centerpiece to that Bogdanovich trade. So it'll be an interesting playoffs. Hopefully this team's healthy. Hopefully this team is hot. Uh, right now they're, you know, four out of their last 10. I mean, half the team didn't play f- Friday. I don't think any of the starters played Friday last week, which is another frustrating thing. I know Sparky's got his feel on, on that as well. And I'm equally upset about it too, because if you go, you're going into Charlotte and you're going into Charlotte team, that's just as banged up. You're fighting for the seeding, man. If you're really content with the three seed, guess what the three seed is going to do? You win in that first round as you should. You get Brooklyn or Philly in the second round. I don't know about you guys. That's not somebody I want to see in the second round. I mean, quite frankly, it's really not. I'm not too thrilled with seeing Brooklyn or Philly and, and, and going and having, you know, not having home court advantage either. Now, I'm not sure. I'd be lying to you if I told you I knew what their fan well, how many fans are allowed to come in? So I'm not really sure if it's really going to be home court. I don't like playing in Brooklyn because of that lighting. It's just a super weird arena. So it's exciting to get into some playoff talk here coming up um, and then get to these brewers. Man, these brewers. This is exciting. I don't want to jump the gun. And I'm absolutely going to jump the gun. And somebody is going to Remember what I said, and they're going to follow me on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter at Wisco underscore Brandon. Somebody is going to remember the words that are about to come out of my mouth. And I can't believe I'm about to say it. How good, in your guys' opinion, is this starting rotation? Now it's early. I get it. Super early, or talking only 10 games into the season. This Brewer starting rotation has a very real possibility, in my opinion, to be some of the best starting rotations we may ever see. Maybe throughout Major League. Rotations, not players, rotation in total. I'm talking starting rotation and bullpen. I mean, you're talking about a rotation right now that has a sub two ERA. I mean, that's incredible. (laughs) It's incredible. And if you go back and and a stat that kind of shocked me, I wouldn't say shocked me. I know he was pretty good last year. But if you go all the way back to last July, Corbin Burns statistically has been the best pitcher in Major League Baseball. The best. Fourth, in, I'm sorry, first in ERA. Not even one, 0.87. Second in strikeouts and fourth in wit. Dating back to last July 27th to now. And it's been phenomenal. Adam, I completely agree with you. Adam drops by on, on, on the YouTube live stream. Burr's pitching has been tops to start the season. And he's exactly right. And that's what we're talking about right now if you guys are just tuning in appreciate it i am your host brandon follow me on twitter at wisco underscore brandon follow our twitter page at brew city pod and also hop in on facebook show us a some love with a with a like and a follow we greatly appreciate it so yeah this i mean adam is right adam hit it right on the head and it's just what we've been talking about right now this brewer pitching is the tops in the league and it may be the tops for the rest of the year. I mean, they're that good. They're they're really good. Your top three pitchers, remember, going into the year, Freddie Peralta was your number five starter. 
Freddie Freddie Peralta just threw six innings last night with one with two hits, one run, as your number five. Freddie Peralta, 0.6 ERA. Corbin Burns, 0.7. I mean, Brandon Woodruff is your number one, and he's at 2.4. I mean, Adrian Hauser, 1.8 ERA. Bullpen's been a little bit shaky to start the year. The bullpen, to me, is one that scare. I wouldn't say scares me a little bit. I think they just need a little bit of time, need a little bit of rhythm. Uh, Devin Williams came on uh, out on and on last night. There was some confusion with Perdomo. Uh, Devin Williams just looked, just couldn't find the strike zone. And I think it's just a little bit of rust. Just shaking off the rust. He's, I mean, it's a long year. And, and that's the thing that, you know, we're kind of getting into is it's a long year. It's a very long year. It's not a 60-game sprint anymore. It's not, you know, are we even going to have a baseball season? I mean, it's a, it's a very long year. But can this starting rotation keep this? you know, the success. I mean, this is a very, very talented pitching rotation. This is a rotation that we saw going back a few months ago, even a few years ago. This is what we were excited about going into 2018 with Woodruff coming up and, and Burns and Peralta. We've seen it on Mother's Day a couple of years ago. Everybody talks about it when Peralta takes the mound. We've seen what they're capable of. I think that they're finally all starting to put it together at the same time. And I think that is what's going to propel this team to a division championship. The offense is slowly breaking out of that slump. I know last night was, was an aggravating type of game. I was texting a friend last night and ladies and gentlemen, I am joined right now by our special guest. Uh, you guys know him as Sparky, Steve Sparky Pfeiffer at 1250 AM. The fan out in Milwaukee, actually part of the statewide network at the Wendy's Big Show. You can listen to them uh, every day of the week, 10 to 2. And also, this is really awesome. This was one of my favorite announcements in the last uh, few weeks. Sparky's Midday Madness, back Monday through Friday, 2 to 3. Sparky, how you doing, sir? Doing good, man. Uh, how are you? I'm awesome. I just, you know, hey, I wanted to uh, thank you for coming on to the show. And before we get started, I got to make you feel old for a quick second. I know you just came on the show and you're you're the special guest, but a you know, funny story about Sparky. If you guys are tuning in and my mom's listening and, and she's going to she's going to love this story and she she remembers it very very good. I got into sports radio. I was a kid and I used to listen to Sparky on my way to school and I would not let my mom change the radio dial. It was back when I believe you were on the mornings with Doug Russell if I'm not mistaken. And that was that was probably 06, 07, 08 time frame. And I've been a fan of yours. Appreciate you coming on. Uh, thank you. How you doing? Doing good, man. Uh, just actually got in the car, so I'm driving. So probably not good to have video while I'm driving. So that's what I'm kind of <laughs> doing to be on the phone here. Safety first. Safety first. Uh, first and foremost. So, uh, yeah, we're excited uh, Excited to have you. I was just kind of talking about this uh, Brewers rotation. I know you guys had a, a jam-packed show today. Uh, Craig Council was on. Um, the show with you guys today and, and kind of got into the RC trade and all kinds of good stuff. What is, I mean, what's kind of stuck out to you this, the start of this year? I know it's early and it's, we're only 10 games in, but there's a lot, a lot of positives so far. Well, what kind of sticks out in, in your mind? Yeah, I think for me, it's, it's Freddie Peralta and Travis Shaw. I think those are the two guys right now that you look at and say, you know, they can play to the level they're playing at right now. And Freddie Peralta's not going to sub one ERA, obviously, but Freddie Peralta's ERA is around three. Uh, for the year and you know he gives them you know five six innings consistently and Travis Shaw hits you know 250 to 270 with 25 30 home runs this goes from being a good team to possibly being a special team because when you start talking about how to go to a world series and win a world series it comes down to pitching in the postseason and to have Burns Woodruff and then Freddie Peralta possibly as your three uh, there's not going to be many guys that can many teams that can run out three better starting pitchers than that in a postseason series Oh, I, I completely agree. And, you know, I'm super excited about the Travis Shaw. You know, when he was picked up, you know, and he was given the minor league deal, a lot of fans are like, okay, cool, whatever. But aside from his bat, his defense this year has been phenomenal. I mean, it's he's just been a stone wall out there at third base. Yeah, he's played really well. You know, if you mentioned we had Craig Council on uh, earlier today on the Wendy's Big Show. Uh, and Council, you know, Gary asked him, Gary Ellison asked him about, you know, the Arcia deal, and he just said, look, 
we saw Travis Shaw in spring training, and he reminded us of how he looked in 2017 and 2018. And if that's what they saw, then based on what I've seen so far, that does look like who Travis Shaw is at this point. That's why you're able to move Orlando Arcia, and that's why, you know, you're not too concerned about it because instead of playing these games of rotating, you know, five, ten guys uh, into third base, I'm exaggerating a little bit, uh, <laughs> now – now you can just play Travis Shaw pretty much, you know, four days a week, five days a week, get Robertson a day here or there, and uh, let Travis Shaw, you know, do his deal and put up huge numbers offensively. And it's exciting, too, um, to see the offense start to click again, and it's very important. I don't know if you caught the lineup yet today. Yelich is going, going to miss his second straight game. Obviously, Colton Wan is out as well. So it is good. As lately, the last two games, obviously they had nine runs in St. Louis, six runs last night. It's good to kind of see this offense going because when you mix this offense, and I was just making a statement before you joined, and I may it may come back and bite me in the butt, but I mean I don't know, Sparky. I, I'm a Brewer, I've been, I'm a lifelong Brewers fan. This might be the best starting rotation I've ever seen in Milwaukee. Uh, right. And I know, I know, I know, I, I know. I, I mean, look, look, it definitely has the best front two that we've had providing these guys Woodruff and Burns pitch like they pitched you know definitely the best front two guys we've seen definitely the best homegrown guys in a rotation all at once for certain no question about that with Burns and Woodruff uh yeah you got Peralta in the Lynn trade or whatever but he pretty much you know came through your fire system too to a certain degree after you got him so those three all together uh it's pretty impressive now Hauser uh, yeah, I mean, realistically, he's probably going to be like your fourth best starter. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. A guy that's still young that you still have control over. And, you know, if his ERA is around four and a half, four, four and a half or whatever, that's still pretty good for being that late in the rotation. And Brett Anderson, if he's pitching well as a ground ball machine, who's more than good enough to be like a fifth starter in this rotation. So, Absolutely. Yeah, after that, you might be right. Maybe this is the, the best five that they've had. I know it's, I mean, and again, like, and, and I mean, I've called into the show for you, you know, for years, I'm, I'm a diehard Milwaukee fan. So I, I they don't get more Homer than I get. So that's okay. If I make that statement, cause I'll, I'll stick by it, you know, till the grave. But I mean, it's just, when you see him go out there and you see, you see uh, Woodruff go into the sixth inning or seventh inning with a no hitter, you see Freddie strike out 10 last night in six innings pitch you see Corbin Burns I mean yeah they Corbin Burns and Freddie Peralta have a sub one ERA right now combined as a starter they're under two I mean as of right now I know it's very early and again you know there's a whole 150 games left I mean they're gonna it's gonna eventually you know maybe tater off a little bit but for right now with that bullpen I and if the offense gets going I mean I don't see how you don't win the division I agree and I, I think I had him at 92 wins when we made our mm-hmm. predictions before opening day uh, to win the division as well. Uh, and, you know, that's the thing. When you have great pitchers in the rotation, you're going to avoid losing six, seven games in a row because these guys are going to shut down a team eventually and you're going to win a game 2 nothing or 3-1 or whatever. And in years past, with the Spurs offense, when it went into tank, your pitching wasn't good enough to overcome it. And that's how you ended up in these long, drawn-out funks that the Bruce have found themselves in. And even when that happened recently, they've still been able to make the postseason. Mm-hmm. So now imagine if you take out these six and seven game losing streaks that happen once or twice throughout the course of the season, morally, normally a couple of times, take those out, puts you even in a better position to go on runs. Now the question is going to be, you know, how many starts will Burns miss? How many starts will Woodruff miss? How many starts will Peralta miss? Mm-hmm. Because coming off of that abbreviated season last year into this year, as mm-hmm. David Stearns has said on our show, it was probably going to be difficult to imagine somebody making 30 or 32 starts throughout the uh, course of a season. So they're going to make less starts. And then guys like Josh Lindblom, God help us, uh, <laughs> is, is probably going to have to make a start here and there throughout. Um, and, you know, you got to do your best when, when that guy's in. Do you think that um, if the Brewers are in the position, and I and my and both of our opinions, I had him at 90, you got him at 92, so we're pretty, we're pretty locked into each other. Do you see, obviously – he wasn't afraid to pull the trigger on Arcia. I, in my opinion, I think they've been trying to trade Arcia for a few years now. Do you, I mean, do you, do you see maybe a big trade possibly? I know we're way looking ahead of the future too far ahead, but is it something that maybe Stearns isn't going to be afraid to do? You know, he's got Christian Yelich in his prime. You got probably the best starting rotation you've had in quite some time. You got Colton Wan, you got 
you know, Kane's, you know, getting older. Jackie Bradley Jr. came as, in here as a free agent. Is this that type of year where you see the division kind of down a little bit compared to years prior? Uh, maybe like an all-in type move from Stearns if need be, if it's, uh, if it's even out there? Well, I think, you know, they've been very consistent, they being the Brewers, and having available funds to make that move if they want to make that move at a deadline. Uh, and Mark Edsonowski, the owner of this team, has been very consistent with that, uh, of allowing them to go get somebody they think is going to make a difference. And that's nice if you're the general manager or president of the baseball operation, whether it's GM Matt Arnold or President Dave Stearns. It's nice to be able to have that. Now, having said that, you know, you start looking ahead, and we are way looking ahead uh, <laughs> as far as, you know, what you may need. Now, obviously, the health of players can dictate what your need becomes. If somebody gets hurt or whatever uh, that isn't a need right now because you don't foresee injury, then obviously that becomes a need. But I think, you know, if everybody is healthy uh, and playing like they should, I, I think what you're going to look and see is that the need is probably going to be you know, another arm to put back there with Hayter and hopefully Devin Williams if he comes around. Because mm-hmm. what you'd love to see is kind of like the Royals did when they went to the World Series a few years back and some of these other teams where you could shorten the game to six innings and then three have, you know, three flamethrowers that set these guys down in order fairly consistently night in and night out where you've got the other team pressing to have the lead after six knowing chances are slim that they're going to be able to win this ball game if they're not winning after six. That's really what you want. So Absolutely. to add another closer type arm back there with Williams and Hader at the deadline, I think would be ideal. Again, providing you know everybody's help. I completely agree with that. And I, I mean, obviously, I tip the hat to David Stearns. I think he's been absolutely phenomenal since he got into that role. Uh, speaking to David Stearns with the Arcia trade, what kind of your thoughts on it? I know you're, you know. Had a, Urias had a big hit last night. Um, he's been struggling, you know, pretty pretty big time at the plate all year. I I love the kid. I I mean, I, he's got high potential to me. Um, obviously, you get rid of Arcia, who's been here for the last seven years. Do you see Urias as like a bridge to Bryce Terrain? Because I know they're huge on. I know he's you know they got high hopes for him down in. I don't even know if he's in Double A AA or Triple A, wherever he's at right now. I mean, do you see like is this? I mean, is Urias a long term option at at shortstop, or is this more of a bridge to to the future? I think if you don't believe in him, then he's probably not the bridge to Terang, and maybe Terang ends up at third base. Okay. If you don't believe in him, then, yeah, he's probably a bridge uh, to him at that point. That, that's kind of how I look at it. I think if he works out, then Terang probably ends up at third base, might be my guess, or maybe Terang does end up at shortstop and Urias moves over to second. Colton Long isn't exactly a free chicken. Uh, I, I, I don't care what Craig Council says about Keston Hira. I do not believe they will ever go back to him full time at second base. If no, I, hits, I don't. If he hits well at first base uh, and doesn't make a lot of errors and figures this out, I think that's where he's going to stay. If he hits well at first base and he's a problem defensively, I think they could eventually trade him in the next year or two to a team that could use him as a DH and you know go find themselves a real first baseman. I really, 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 really want them to go draft a stud first baseman in the amateur draft. That's what I want. I, I, and I understand that they're, I don't know if they would say they're categorically opposed to that, but they don't like drafting the Prince Fielders of the world. They mm-hmm. like drafting athletes and then moving them to wherever they want to move them. I, on the other hand, love drafting a big, plot speed, power hit first baseman uh-huh. that's, you know, just going to hit bombs time in and time out that's like six and I can't feel there wasn't tall but you know give me a six four first baseman that can hit home run that's what I want I, I I'll pass on all these other versions of how they've been trying to play first base over the years I completely yeah. agree and if you're just joining me I got Steve Sparky Pfeiffer from 1250 AM the fan find him on the statewide network on the Wendy's big show find him on Twitter at Sparky Radio Sparky, I got to dip into the Bucks because if you listen into the show, if people know Sparky, and you better know who Sparky is if you like the Bucks, how worried are you about the knee? I know, I know, we've been told not to be worried, but how worried are you? I'm getting more concerned the longer this goes. I, again, earlier today when we talked about it with Gary and Leroy and all of brought up tendonitis, and they both right. said, "Yeah, that could be what it is," or. Uh, some meniscus stuff going on and either one of them said that okay well if they get it fixed here with the rest mice all of that 
neither one said that it wouldn't come back again. So, you know, from that perspective, if, if it's a fetiditis thing, then it's just going to be a matter of can you play through it. Now, clearly, it's not a big deal to them because it's the regular season. Uh, mm-hmm. And they're more about, look, we're going to be judging what we do in the postseason, not the regular season. And they're right in that aspect. That's exactly how they're going to be judged going forward. But, but, but again, I mean, the, the longer he stays out and you're not saying what's going on, the more mm-hmm. suspicious everybody's going to be as just as far as what this is. Durant goes out, they tell you what's wrong with Durant. Harden goes out, they tell you what's wrong with Harden. Kyrie sits out, it could be a numerous, you know, different things. Kyrie, who knows with Kyrie? But LeBron, Anthony Davis, those guys go up. He can tell you, oh, okay, he's got this. He'll be back in two or three weeks. It's no playing games. And here, you know, we're just playing games for the last couple of weeks mm-hmm. instead of just telling us what's going on. So I have no idea. I mean, this, this whole load management thing, no. You're not sending a guy five straight games for low no. management. You put a guy five straight games because something's wrong. And that's kind of what, you know, kind of leading into my next uh, topic was, you know, obviously Giannis, and we all know this, Giannis is not the type of player to miss games. He never has. I mean, even when he, when, even when he's banged up, Giannis is out there. And he, I mean, look what he did in Portland when he was hurt with the initial knee at 48 points. I mean, this guy does not miss games. He hates missing games. So, and then you'll look at the, the lineup last week, Friday, you know, I had a, I had a live show last week, Friday, I got off, off the air and I was super excited to sit down and watch a Bucks game. And right before I get on the show and I look at the starting lineup and all the starters are out. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I, to me, I think this team is content on the three seed. I, and I think that's a mistake to be honest with you. Uh, I think they're not too concerned about it. And I think the other thing is, you know, they very well may look at the one seed and go, it's not like they're that far out in front. You know, we can we can make that up in a couple of weeks and get right back to where we want to be uh, once we want to be there. I agree with you that the two of the three seed is a problem. Not that it's a problem in the first round. The problem is going to be in the second round when you have to face the other seed. Yeah. You know, to think that yeah. you want to have to try and go through uh, Philadelphia uh, or, you know, Brooklyn or whatever in the second round of the playoffs, to then have to go face the other one And the conference finals, that's a lot tougher road to go through, I think, than if you're the one seed. That's just me, though. I mean, I could could be wrong, I guess. I'm with you. I I, I would much rather be the one seed go the other way. But, you know, there's that whole theory of, look, if you're the best, then you should be able to beat whoever we put in front of you. So, you know, we'll see. And, and, and my concern with that too is, and I, and I mean, I can see, I can see that argument and I, and I, you know, you could have an argument. That's fine. What I, what my concern is, is, is this isn't the same team of 2019, 2020. I mean, you got, you know, Bobby Portis is new. Drew Holiday is new. PJ Tucker is new. I mean, this is not, this is not this, you know, the team that's been together for the last five years. These guys are all you know, important core pieces of the team. When you talk about Drew Holiday have not played with each other all year. I mean, it, Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday missed from COVID, and Bobby Portis missed from COVID. Not that Bobby Portis is a core, but you still want that rotation to have some kind of fluidity to it. And Giannis and and Drew are still trying to work, you know, you know, figure out how to play with each other. And it and it kind of worries me that they that that they haven't played a whole lot together. I mean, what is, is that is that wow. some is that something to be crazy about or? No, I don't think it's something to be crazy about. Uh, I, I, the other thing, too, is now there's a report out today that Joe Johnson is working out for the Bucks this week. 40-year-old Joe Johnson. <laughs> 39-year-old Joe Johnson is going to work out. So now you're going to add that piece to it as well uh, if you decide to bring him in, and that is, you know, a guy off the bench come in and provide some offense behind Dante DiVincenzo, which, again, you or better yet to take back Hottis' minutes. I'd be fine with that, too. But, but see, that's the thing here is at the end of the day, it's, it's going to be not necessarily, I, I don't think, about chemistry necessarily. It's more going to be about when you're facing Philly and Brooklyn, and God forbid they get Miami at some point, <laughs> it's going to be how you close games in the last four mm-hmm. to five minutes. You know, in a tight game, who's taking the reins, who's doing what, and more importantly, who's going to be on the floor at that point? You know, is Boonholes are going to make the right decision? And that, that's the one thing is, you know, you talk about Friday night's game, and luckily you didn't buy tickets and waste money to that. No kidding. But a Jordan Wara, who's a second-round pick, who's playing his butt off every time he's given the opportunity, he finally got a little bit of run last game when he mm-hmm. started to play. Should it be trusted in the postseason to be playing in a big situation? You know, is that why they're looking at Joe Johnson? Because they want a, a more of a veteran-type guy? 
uh, maybe more so than even Pat Connaughton to be in that situation at the end of the game. So they don't have to play Pat C necessarily at the end. And there has to be a reason you're bringing him in. So if, unless it's a favor to the agent to try and get Joe Johnson some publicity, which I guess could be a possibility. But I would think that, you know, you do have interest. And it revolves around the playoffs and his experience in the postseason. And having that guy at the end of games that can hit a big shot on a drawn kick from Holiday or Giannis. Or mm-hmm. And I think I think that's going to be the biggest difference. You know, a lot of people, and, and if last week I, I dove into like a 20-minute love fest because I, I I just I really love Drew Holiday. Um and I think that the difference in this year's playoffs versus 2019 and 2020 is I think and my hope is that Drew Holiday is going to be that difference, you know, that we did not have in those playoffs. What are your thoughts on that? And also what are your thoughts on Drew Holiday stating he's a buck for life and signing that extension? Well, I mean he's not getting any younger either. So I mean, he may just be he may just be looking at it and say, I'm done after this. Like I've probably I've, no, I've made more than enough money. This is gonna set my family up and maybe he decides decides that he's pretty much done. Uh I, I think Drew Holiday's been a huge addition to this Bucks team. He's better than Eric Bledsoe. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, it's all gonna depend on what happens in the postseason. You know, Drew Holiday has played very, very well uh for certain. But what I wanna see is what's going to happen when they're all on the court together. Right. Holiday, Wilson, and Giannis. You know, everybody talks about the Nets and, oh, boy, what's going to happen there? Well, I want to know what's going to happen with the Bucs. Mm-hmm. Because in end-of-game situations, is Boone are going to go to Drew Holiday and go, this is your shot. Go get it. Is he going to do that? Or are we going to run everything through Giannis? That's the first option. Let him take that, you know, 15 to 20-foot jumper and see if he hits it, I guess. Nothing's open. Or how is this going to work at the end of game? How is it going to work in the last three, four minutes of the game? Is it going to be the Giannis show trying to close it out? Is it going to be we're going to go to more true holiday? I kind of give given up on Middleton at the end of games uh-huh. from their perspective. I think Middleton could still hit big shots at the end of games. I'd be fine with that too. That's what I want to see because so many times when Eric Bledsoe was here, you know, he would just kind of be a shadow to Giannis and Middleton. It would just kind of stay out of it. And then if one of them got in foul trouble or got hurt, then he got more aggressive offensively. And that's the one thing I want to see what's going to happen with Drew Holiday. What will he be like in the playoffs when they need buckets? Is he going to defer or is he going to try and take charge and do something himself? And that's what I'm looking to see. Perfect, perfect segue into my, into my next question for you. And we'll get, we'll get wrapped up here soon. But my next question for you is I, I ran a poll on Twitter uh, at Bruce City Pod. You know, I was kind of just trying to get a feel for where, you know, Bucks fans, because Middleton the night or the week prior or whatever it was a few days prior was like six out of 27 for whatever how many points he was he had a horrible game so in your opinion in your opinion you're okay you're you got a, a max player you know Giannis is your number one he's arguably the best player in the NBA but who's that number two behind Giannis in your opinion now I ran a poll and it was kind of back and forth for a while and I think the consensus came to Drew Holiday I had a lot of comments in the uh, in the live feed um, I still lean towards Middleton just because of the shot making ability, not saying that Drew can't do that as well, but I think when Middleton is on, there's not a whole lot of players, uh, you know, that can shoot as, as well as he does. Uh, in your opinion, two part question, who is the number two and do they need one? We did the same thing on the big show. I had the same conversation <laughs> last week about Middleton and Drew Holiday and uh, Drew Holiday obviously is, is the guy that everybody's going to say. I, and my, my thought process on it is, as long as Giannis is there, it's going to be Chris Middleton. Mm-hmm. I don't I, – maybe I'm wrong on this, but I, I just think Middleton is his guy. They've been there forever. And the third guy is going to be the third guy, unless, you know, it's a no-doubter. If Kevin Durant's on the team, okay, fine. Okay, we're, we're done having that conversation. Then it's probably Durant, <laughs> then Giannis. And I think Giannis deals with that, and he's fine with that. Uh, but in this situation, and a couple of listeners brought it up, and that is 2A, 2B. Like, it's close. Mm-hmm. You know, on a given night, it might be a, a, a different guy between Middleton uh, and Drew Holiday. But I think in, in probably Giannis's mind, it, it's probably still Chris Middleton. In the coach's mind. Now, that's what I'd like to know. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's Pat Connaughton if it's Boone Holder. Who knows? <laughs> and that's, I mean, I, and, and, I, and going back to what you said before, I think that's what's going to be interesting going into the playoffs. Now, my final question, and I'll let you, I'll, I'll let you go here real quick. I not calling for anybody's job. I think but Mike Boonholzer, you know, does his job better than I do mine. But is this a make or break type playoff for him? Now I know 
you know, he, you know, p- players love playing for him and, you know, he's a revered Popovich disciple, but if you get, I mean, if it's another, if you're in another second round exit, Giannis just signed the super max. You got Drew holiday. You got Chris Middleton here for the, you know, long haul. I mean, is this, and I don't want to call for his job. I pray to God that we all uh, have a parade down in uh, water street celebrating a championship. Is this like a make, in your opinion, a make it or break it for Mike Budenholzer? I mean, to get at least through the Eastern conference finals. If Wes Edens was the owner, I'd say, no, it's not. But it's Mark Lazary. I mean, they're right. owners. Obviously, but Lazary has the final say as governor. So, and this rotates every five years, remember, as part of this deal. Jamie yep. Dynan uh, didn't get apparently in on this. He got in on, on the too late to be a part of this. Yep. Uh, so he's not a part of it. But uh, Lazary's a wild card in all this. We don't know. I mean, he's he definitely seems to be, in the conversations I've had with him and Edens, he definitely seems to be more of the fan. Uh, for sure, maybe Eden. I'm not saying that Eden isn't a fan of the team, he is, but he tends to operate more like a business, mm-hmm. maybe more so than Lazarus. And remember, Mark Lazarus, he wasn't a Boonholzer guy, that no. wasn't his guy wanted. No. So, take that into account for what it is, and knowing that they're going to have to pay the luxury tax now, it'll be interesting to see what happens if they get booed in the second round. Remember, Lazarus is the one, not Eden, that went and got Jason Kidd while he still had a coach in Milwaukee. Oh, absolutely. So, I, I, Unfortunately, do remember that. Ladies and gentlemen, he is Steve Sparky Pfeiffer. Find him on Twitter at Sparky Radio. Also, go ahead and jump on Twitter while you're doing that and follow the Big Show Network at Big Show Network 10 to 2. Find Sparky on Sparky's Midday Madness 2 to 3. I promise you, you don't want to miss that hour because it is awesome. Sparky, I appreciate it, man. I know you're you're driving and you worked all day, so I I greatly appreciate your time. Um, Hopefully, I can have you on in the near future. Sounds good, man. I appreciate it. Take care. Have a good one, Sparky. Steve drops off, and that's awesome. I mean, everybody that knows Bucks fans knows who Steve Sparky Pfeiffer is. Uh, he's the pulse of the city on this team just as much as as anybody. So it was good to get a lot of his thoughts. And some of his thoughts going into this season with Mike Budenholzer being possibly on the hot seat. Who is your number two? Who should be your number two? Yeah, we kind of I'm kind of on the same uh, you know, page with with Steve Sparky. Pfeiffer um, and hopefully Bud does make the right, you know, right calls. Um, speaking of calls, if you're paying too much for your cable bill, listen up real quick because we're all paying too much for our cable bill. Hop on over to onecalltech.com, www.onecalltech.com, or give them a call at 888 585 8850 and tell them Brandon from the Bruce City Lounge sent you over here. I promise you. You will save money on your cable bill. You're paying way too much these days. Switching over to the Brewers and heading into our final segment. Um, I'm excited about what's going to happen tonight. You've got Brandon Woodruff on the mound versus the Brewers Killer is what I like to call them. We have Bucks Killers. We have Brewer Killers. Kyle Hendricks. Ugh. I don't know what it is with this guy. I don't know if he just has that much <laughs> of a hold on this team, but uh, it's going to be game two. Uh, first pitch is 640. We're going to dive into preview in that um, before we call it a night. But I, I am excited about this this game tonight because I do think that you won three in a row. You just came off a, a series winning uh, against St. Louis, huge at St. Louis. I believe it was their opening weekend at Bush Stadium. So that's huge. You're coming off of, you're coming off a series win against St. Louis, and now you have the opportunity – to establish another series win where you just beat the same team in Chicago last week. Now you have a chance to take game two, maybe take game three, but let's focus on game two. And I don't care what anybody says. Uh, you hear people all the time. Ah, it's early. It's early. It's a long season, 162 games. It's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. hundred percent agree. Never will disagree with that, but guess what? <laughs> it took the game 163 two years ago to, to win the division against the Cubs. These early divisional games matter. And I was texting with a friend last night and I said the same thing. And he kind of agreed with me. It is a long season. You could lose 10 games in a row and you still, you could still be fine. I get it. I want these early divisional series. I want to win. Because I don't want to be chasing in July, in August, in September, and have to win 21 games like they did two years ago. 
I don't know about you guys. I want to take a hold of this division. And you have a perfect opportunity right away. I know Cincinnati's, you know, on par with us. And I'm not worried about Cincinnati long term. Not for the rest of the year, at least. But I want to know what your guys' thoughts are. Follow us on Twitter at Brew City Pod. Drop us a like and follow on Facebook at Brew City Lounge. Drop a comment in the live feed. What are your thoughts on this early brewer season? It's very early. And you heard what I said to Sparky. You heard what I said prior to coming on the show. Or I'm sorry, prior to Sparky coming on the show. I think that this is the best starting rotation that this franchise has ever had as a whole. And you could argue the bullpen is just as good. Historically, Hayter and Williams are the best. I'm not going to compare them to, you know, the 90s Braves or, you know, maybe as far as the Brewers go, as far as this franchise goes. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I do not think as a starting rotation, as a whole, one through five, I mean, guys, if Adrian, if Adrian Hauser is your fifth starter, okay, or say he's your fourth, he's got a 1.80 ERA right now in two starts. Ten innings pitched and only allowed two runs. It's early. I, I get it. But, man. They are fun to watch. Freddie Peralta going, I mean, it's must-watch TV. Every Brewers game is a must-watch TV for me. But holy mackerel, when you see Freddie Peralta dropping down 10, making Javier Baez throw his bat at the mound or let go of his bat, making guys fall on one knee while they're swinging at his slider, Corbin Burns just blowing through him, hitting the corners at 98, Brandon Woodruff going into a no-hitter, into the seventh inning in Chicago. This is a this is the opportunity, in my opinion, to, to have a very special year in Milwaukee. The Bucks are getting into the playoffs in next month, and the Brewers are off to a good start. Three in a row. They're at home for a while. And let's hope that health you know, stays, stays good because we know as a Milwaukee fan, we know that's what usually, you know, usually how it happens. Great start, best starting rotation. And then you lose a pitcher down for a year. And then it takes a hit on the whole rotation, not just one. Let's drop into some of the comments. Adam drops into a comment says, if the offense catches up to the starting rotation and the bullpen, they will be a dangerous team. They could benefit from acquiring another arm close to the trading deadline. Adam, I think you're absolutely spot on. The offense has shown some, some flashes these last two games. Last night was fun, man. <laughs> that six runs in that one inning. Yeah, we were watching the game, and I was, again, texting with a friend, and I said, man, if they don't get something going, uh, it's frustrating because Freddie's dealing. I is dealing. One mistake to Chris Bryant. At two hits. One earned run. I mean, got to get the offense going. So, Adam, I, I completely agree. Um, my dad, actually, Kendall, drops a comment. The 19, 1982 Brewers, uh, great pitching. They absolutely did. Absolutely. I mean, I went all the way to the World Series, so there's nothing that I can really argue with that. Obviously, I wasn't born or alive yet, so that's something that I wasn't able to see in person. I just read about it. You arguably have three. It's early. Again, proceed with caution. But I'm excited. I'm super excited. You have three potential Cy Young candidates. Don't forget, guys, last year, Corbin Burns was a Cy Young finalist. If I'm not mistaken. And they're all young. Freddie's 24 years old. He's been in the league for three or four years. 24 years old. Corbin Burns, 26. 
the old man in the group, I guess, if you want to call him old, he's 28. Brandon Woodruff, he's your number one starter. He's 28 years old. Don't forget, Devin Williams was a rookie last year. Christian Yelich is here for the long haul. Keston Hero is not going anywhere. Avi Garcia looks like he's the Avi Garcia of the, of, the, of the old days prior to COVID last year. Juan drops in a comment. Keep up the good work, buddy. Hashtag 414. Juan, thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Shout out to him. He is the president and founder at Lounge Room Net. Follow him at BearsFanatico94 if you're a Bears fan. <laughs> thank you, Juan. So again, there's a lot to be excited about. There's a lot to be excited about. Get out to the ballparks. Tailgating's back open. Get out and enjoy the city. It's a lot of fun. This team is going to be a lot of fun this summer. And there's a lot of teams that are not going to want to play the Milwaukee Brewers. The, the hitters put a lot of pressure on opposing pitchers. They're feisty. Colton Juan will get back to being healthy. Lorenzo Cain is coming around to being healthy. Keep in mind, he missed a lot of spring training due to that quad. So it's exciting times for sure. And then back to the Bucks, and then we'll wrap it up. This is you know, kind of what Sparky was talking about prior to him leaving. He wants to see what they do in the playoffs, and I'm with them. I'm tired of regular season success. And that may sound spoiled. I mean, that's fine. You got the best player in the NBA. You got a top 10 point guard. You got a top 10 two guard. You got a great bench. What are you going to do when it's playoff time? We're going to bow out again in a second round against Miami? Or is Giannis going to learn what they're doing against him defensively. Is, is Bud going to adapt? Is the guy in the corner going to be wide open every single freaking time that they're down there? Is what it feels like. I mean, this team hasn't played together a lot. we got to also keep that in mind. They're still figuring out each other. Drew and Giannis are still learning how to play with each other. Giannis is still learning how to play with Drew. Drew's still learning how to play with Chris Middleton. So is, is, is Bud on the hot seat? That's a question. I mean, that's a great question. That's not a crazy question. I mean, that's a great question. I think Bud's a great coach. There's certain things I wish he would do versus what he has done. But look, I mean, that's okay. Hopefully he learns from his mistakes. Because I'm going to tell you right now, you just signed Giannis to the Supermax. You got Drew Holiday, four-year extension. You got Chris Middleton who signed a five-year deal last year, max contract. These guys, are, these guys are together. This is your core. This is what's going to be on your team for the next four to five years. What are you going to do with those? This is the best team that Milwaukee, talent-wise, has ever seen in the last 20, 30 years. Obviously, Oscar and, and Kareem. But maybe the 2001 team, I guess you could argue. But this is arguably one of the best talented teams that we've seen in Milwaukee. So it's going to be a very interesting, interesting playoff run. And my dad drops in the comments says, I think they're going to have a deep run in the playoffs this year. That's how good the Brewers are. He's talking about the Brewers. I completely agree. I don't. I, I mean, you guys heard it when, when Sparky was on. He said 92. I'm thinking 90 wins. And yeah, I don't think, you know, you probably somewhere down the line, find the Dodgers, Atlanta, or the Padres. If uh, Tatis gets her, uh, healthy, you probably see them somewhere down deep in the playoffs. So I agree with that. And he also drops in. You got to hope Giannis comes back. And yeah. And again, I said it earlier on the, in the beginning of the show, prayers out to Jamal Murray. Um, you hate to see that. Uh, hopefully he bounces back. Such a talent out there. Such a great point guard. And you talk about another two-way Great point guard and, and my infatuation with Drew Holiday. Jamal Murray is is right there. I mean, you got it. You got to hope that he comes back and and has a a healthy recovery. And our thoughts and prayers go out to him. You hate to see it. If you are just catching up on the show, 
that's okay. Um, keep in mind, there is no Bucks game tonight. The Brewers kick off first pitch at 640. Um, so that's going to be fun to watch tonight. Hopefully they can grab a win and grab a series win against the Cubs. Adam drops in one more comment, says mid-90 wins for Milwaukee. That's a lot, Adam. <laughs> That's a lot. I mean, I'm, I hope you're not wrong. <laughs> I hope you're not wrong. I, I'm thinking right about 90. And, and again, guys, Adam is not even a Brewers fan. He's a, he's a White Sox fan, if I'm not mistaken. But he can, I'm pretty sure he's a White Sox fan because last week he was on because the White Sox didn't have a game. Adam's an, a loyal listener and, and a loyal supporter, and I appreciate him a ton. He says mid-90 wins. I, I guess we'll see. It's going to be interesting. As long as this Brewer team stays healthy, I really don't think that that's, uh, you know, out of the question. I'm thinking 90, you know, somewhere between 88 to 90, you know, somewhere down the line, somebody's going to flare up an injury and go to the 10 day IL or the 20 day IL. But Adam, I hope you're right. Cause if, if, if it is around that around mid nineties, then, then I don't think that, uh, I don't think that there's much that can stop us. Even LA, even Atlanta. As good as they are, as good as Okuna is, and Mookie, and Tatis. This pitching staff stays healthy and stays as dominant as they, as they have been. I don't see why it would be out of the question. Juan drops a comment and says, we all know the Sox will win against the Brewers this year, so count those games as L's. <laughs> Whatever you say, Juan. At least he's not a Cubs fan, I guess. At least you're not a Cubs fan. So... One more comment. We'll, we'll get wrapped up here. My dad says, I think Giannis's knee injury is worse than they're saying. And I, and that's kind of what I alluded to with Sparky. Cause I kind of agree with you because he doesn't miss games. And when you talk about Giannis, his, his number one thing about Giannis is he's loyal and he's dedicated and he does everything that he possibly can, no matter what for him to miss five straight games. I don't think <laughs> it is load management at all. This is something a little bit more serious. This is a little bit something more, Something lingering. And, and if anything, if you're going to learn anything from the Jamal uh, Murray injury, now keep in mind, Jamal Murray was battling some knee soreness prior to that game as well last night. And when he landed down, obviously, he tore his ACL. So pr- proceed with caution with Giannis. You don't want to rush him in. We've got about a little over a month left until the playoffs start. So I guess rest him. They, he was a full t- uh, participant in practice today, according to Eric Name of the athletics. So I guess that's positive. I don't know his practice schedule and what it's been. Um, but yeah, so Brewers kick Brewers first pitch, six forty. bucks in action tomorrow. Stay tuned for Thursday's show. We are not going to be doing a Friday show. It is not going to be a live show. I believe I'm going to do it recording special guest. Tim Dillard joins the show. If you're a Brewers fan, if you're a baseball fan, you know who Tim Dillard is. He is one of the uh, anchors and hosts on Bally Sports TV. He is also a hilarious personality. Pitched for the Brewers for 10 plus years uh, in the majors and in the minors. Um, he is set to join the show Thursday. Um, if you're not going to be tuning in live, which I'm still undecided if we're going to be live or not, but please don't forget to subscribe to the show. You can find us on Google, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, basically wherever you get your podcasts. And the, the support is so appreciated. Um, follow me on Twitter. I am your host. You can follow me on Twitter at Wisco underscore Brandon. You can follow the show social media pages on Twitter at Bruce City Pod. Also give us a thumbs up and follow on Facebook at Bruce City Lounge and follow the network at Lounge Room Net. Brand new network. We're just kicking off. There's so much to look forward to. I look forward to diving into all things Bucks and Brewers all year with you, getting your takes, what it's going to take to get a championship into the city. I appreciate you taking the time today to take a listen. Again, don't forget to subscribe and download wherever you get your podcasts. And I will see you guys again on Thursday. Have a great day. Have a great rest of your week. Love you, Milwaukee. Later. Guys, as always, thank you so much for tuning into the Brew City Lounge. If you need to catch up all your Bucks and Brewers, please tune into our social media pages. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Brew City Pod. Also, don't forget, subscribe and download wherever you get your podcasts. Apple, Spotify, 
Google, and more. Thanks so much.